most of you think that constipation is only having a hard stool. No, that's not true. Having a hard stool is, of course, a one sign of you getting constipation, that hard stool that is difficult to pass. But constipation simply means you've gone for more than 48 or even 72 hours, there is no bowel movement, whether soft or hard. Okay? So, yeah, you've gone 72 hours straight, no going to the loo. And remember, the gut is very fixable. The gut is trainable. That's why I tell my people to read Atomic Habits. You develop habits and you replace healthy habits, you replace bad habits with healthy habits. You can hardly just drop one habit. It's hard. You need you need to substitute it. So if it's time for you to go for two for the road in the evening, you simply replace that with the gym. If it's time for you to do something bad in the evening, you do it. If it's something if you know during the weekends you're a person who will go out and, and just destroy your life totally, and you leave for the weekend, what you do is during the weekends you start fasting. So you substitute then healthy behaviors with healthy behaviors that actually help you uh, grow better and bigger. Okay, so that's how, how it happens. So when you train your gut and you realize very well that every time, if you're somebody who goes to the loo in the morning, anytime you wake up, you're feeling that urge to go to the toilet. Most of you ignore that urge. And I will show you that that urge that you keep on ignoring, that you constantly ignore, that can be very dangerous. It can actually be one of the causes of constipation because when you ignore that urge, you're actually straining your gut. Okay. So when the gut wants to go for that uh, bowel movement, please allow it. And I will show you the habits that you people have developed that actually destroy your gut. And that's why most people are complaining of gastritis, ulcers, H. pylori, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, bloating, and passing gas all the time. Some of you pass gas and you ladies, <laughs> some of you ladies are so well groomed and looking. But when you pass gas, hey, 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 <laughs> yeah. A man with a good tie, like this one of mine. And then this guy passes gas and, hey, I don't know why. <laughs> why when you just, when somebody senses that that bad smell that is coming from you, you start laughing. Why Why is that the case, by the way? <laughs> why is it that when you pass that bad gas and then somebody in your environment just, Nanusa, you start laughing? What is so funny about that? Somebody so well-dressed, well-groomed, well-behaved, but when it comes to passing gas, hey, hey. <laughs> You're like, hey, mommy, yeah, that way, <laughs> that way. Hey, hobere, <laughs> hobere. So in Luya, hobere means forgive us. <laughs> okay? So hobere, hey. Amma. It's like you've been eating everything that is coming your way. Hey. <laughs> anyway, so when you don't pass the boil movement for about 72 hours, that can actually be classified as constipation. Okay, and that is actually a problem because less than three bowel movements in a week. Okay, so basically that's the definition. Less than three bowel movements in a week, that is constipation. So you can imagine that. You're eating so, mu so much, but when you go to the loo, actually you don't even have the urge to go to the loo. If you go to the toilet, you're only going to urinate and that's it. Okay, and if you're taking salt as we advise here, chances of you going to urinate are even uh, slimmer. Okay, so sometimes when you now get the stool, it's either very small, kama ile kumbuzi, and it's very hard, it's very irritating. And remember, uh, this, the, the, the rectum on the anus is actually lined by cells. So sometimes you can irritate those cells when this hard stool is coming out. And when that happens, you rupture it. And for those people who have suffered hemorrhoids, remember an increase in blood pressure in the plexus of blood vessels that actually line the rectum. An increase in that pressure is the one that causes the popping of these blood vessels into the rectum. And now you have heart stool coming out and this heart stool ruptures those blood vessels and you start bleeding. So anytime you pass a stool and you see fresh blood, simply know you are rupturing blood vessels in the rectum. Okay, simply know that there's a chance of infection because the largest population of gut microorganisms are living in the rectum and in the large intestine. So if you have a slight wound in the large intestine, now a chance of getting a bacterial infection and sepsis goes up because it's easy for us to get uh, this getting into the system. And also know that the rectum is lined by an absorbing surface. Now, this is to uh, people who, <laughs> who perform anal uh, sex. Please stop. Because one, you're going to rupture uh, those cells there. They are not designed for that. They are not designed for an entry they're designed for an exit that is one number two you have all the organs that are adapted to sex they are lubricated they are elastic and they can accommodate every single thing that goes there and that is intended to go there 
So stop using the exit, please. Forgive us. I don't know. I told you when I was growing up, I wanted, I really wanted to study this rainbow so much. But in my place, rainbow could only occur maybe once in a month. When the rains come and go, they only occur once in a month. But nowadays, I am pushed to understand the rainbow every single day. And that's so upsetting. Because when I wanted it, it wasn't there. Now, now it is now here. And yes, we have to live with it. But again, I am a righteous person. Therefore, I will discern what is evil. And I will uphold what is right. So do not perform anal sex. That is supposed to be an exit. Let it remain as such. The reason why most people are having hemorrhoids. The reason why most people are having anal fissures. The reason why you people are getting all this diarrhea that is uncontrollable. The reason why now industries that sell adult pampers are actually making a living and multi-billion dollar, uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry and they're making billions of uh, dollars in terms of profit is because of our own behaviors. We've become worse than animals and animals have actually become uh, better than human beings. So please let exits be exits, use the entrance. Thank you very much for understanding. <laughs> so now that we are we are training our boil to have a movement, maybe a one movement every day and also that way. So there are people who, you go to the loon now, you empty the boil, but when you come out, you've not emptied it. You feel like you, don't, you did not empty it completely. You need a checkup. And you need to change your behavior. Why am I saying that? Nowadays, most of you go to the loo with a phone. You cannot skip on a TikTok gossip. You must go to the toilet with your phone. You're busy on TikTok, you're busy reading research, you're busy journaling, you're doing these things and, and all that. You're reading a novel in the toilet. Please, respect that room. Go there, do your business and walk out. It is a room for defecation or for urination. Do the business and come out. Stop sitting in a toilet and studying in a toilet. Why? You don't have a study room. What is happening with, with us nowadays? So go into the toilet for the shortest period of time, deposit what you have to deposit and move. And when you flush the toilet and you realize your stool does not flush easily, it simply swings on water and comes back. And it has some form of mucus or foam on top of it. Be very observant. Some of you don't even look at your stool. You're so classy that now your stool has become an enemy. So when you see that, that's a sign that either you have an amoebic infection or you're having problems with your rectum. Okay, so stool is supposed to be flushed and goes. But I'll talk about these sit-on toilets that we've impressed. We don't know where they came from. We were adapted and human beings are supposed to to poop while squatting. So I'll talk about the normal and the correct position for pooping. And this will tell you why most of you have a problem with ad adequate emptying of the boil. The pooping position is very important, so we'll talk about it. So anyway, what are the causes of this problem? Because you cannot just wake up one day and your body does not pass stool. Because it's normal that if you're eating, you digest, you absorb nutrients because your gut is fixed. When you absorb nutrients optimally, the rest, the body has to discard it. It's sending to the large intestines where bacteria act on the fiber. They eat the fiber. They give you back the B vitamins or they help you absorb more nutrients. And then the rest is packaged in a very good way, but a very smelly one. Pumped into the anus so that you can actually pop it out. And immediately gets into the anus or near the rectum into the anus. You get the reflex to go for, to pass a bowel movement. That's when you run to the toilet to just ease yourself up. And once you do that, you feel so good about yourself. Now you thank yourself for eating healthy and having a fixed gut. But when you miss a bowel movement today, tomorrow, the following day, yet you have not traveled, there is no change in weather, your diets are still the same, you've hydrated adequately, now you need a medical checkup. And already when I'm mentioning those things, I'm mentioning the causes of constipation. So you can simply start to understand, oh, if I'm not hydrating adequately, that can be a cause of constipation. And again, you'll realize some of the medication for constipation, like osmotic laxatives, can actually cause you dehydration, causing you more constipation later on. So imagine we want you to be hydrated so that you can actually pass stool nicely. But now you are dehydrated, you end up taking a laxative that actually causes you more dehydration. You start destroying your kidneys, you start destroying the rectum, and now more constipation comes in. So it's a very interesting phenomenon, and that's why laxatives are only supposed to be used for a short period of time. Nowadays, you guys give your children every time a laxative. Ladies, please, let's, let's be respectful to these children. Let them just grow into a normal way. One, you realize you have very bad eating habits, and the only thing you can do is pass these habits to your child. Now, this child 
is eating five meals a day. Yet that is not enough. You still go to the pharmacy and buy multivitamin syrups and, and uh, appetite stimulants so that your child can continue <laughs> eating just like you. You think a child is a small adult. The children are not small adults. Your baby has a gut or a stomach that's like your fist. So then how do you buy appetite stimulants to make your child feed like you? Your child is already feeding on four meals a day plus snacking in between. And then you are not satisfied with that because you're thinking this child is actually growing thin. And of course, they have to grow thin or fat either way. Why? Because their guts are messed up, so they cannot even absorb nutrients in their optimum amounts. So now what happens is you go to the pharmacy, you buy antibiotics, you give this child, the gut is messed up, they are unable to digest food and absorb it optimally. They are eating wheat products, the seed oils, the guts are messed up. They cannot digest protein because their stomach acid is so weak. They end up getting constipation. And now, the same same person who bought these children, the appetite stimulant, is the same same person who is going to buy these children a laxative. Dulcolax is there. Lactulose is there. You are quick to buy them a laxative because you are thinking this child has to empty the boil so that he can eat. Sometimes I look at you people and I wonder. So your child is eating five meals a day, but that's not enough. You go and buy an appetite stimulant or a multivitamin. That is not enough. You go and buy a laxative to empty the boil of the child totally. So, so that the child's stomach remains empty so that you can actually feed them just the same way you feed. That doesn't make sense to me. So you buy them appetite stimulant, they end up getting problems with digestion, and then you buy them laxatives. And these laxatives get them into problems. And imagine introducing laxatives to children who are so young and you're giving them all the time, and then their guts get used to this. Their nerves and their reflexes start to fail. They start to depend on the laxative. And now every time you will have to load this child with a laxative so that they can actually have a bowel movement. Imagine that. So you're making these children addicts as early as possible. So this child is already suffering nutrient deficiencies, malnutrition, a fatty liver, and now problems with the gut. Now you're there wondering, why am I taking the child to hospitals every single time? Why is my child this way? But the answers lie with you. They are there, anywhere way. Let just children grow into a normal way. Let them feed healthy. When they want food, they will ask for it. Do you think a child can actually die of hunger? They can't die of hunger. So do not feed your children. Do not overfeed them. And do not make them behave just like you. Because children learn by observation and imitation. However, they were born intelligent. So sometimes they ignore what you're pushing to them. But you will constantly, you will even whip them for not eating. I remember I used to be beaten when I was a kid to just eat. I'm like, I don't want food. But my mother would whip you. Why did you not eat? I went to play football. I forgot about lunch. I will have to receive a whipping so that tomorrow I have to eat. I was like, why would I eat if I don't want to eat? So in her head, she was thinking, I did not eat because she chose this food. Because she made maybe porridge or romaine or something. So she's thinking, I don't like that food. And that's the only one that is available. So I have to eat it anyway. But I didn't want to eat. And I've seen that even in my younger siblings. They used to receive a whipping <laughs> because they're not eating. That's the same thing that you people are doing. You beat this child to eat. And then you threaten them with these uh, small things here. Oh, you know, then now the child is busy feeding. But you can easily see on the face that this child is busy straining. The next day, the child is constipating. You are in the pharmacy because you are the doctor now, because you just went on the internet and studied about constipation in children, and now you're there taking lactulose. You're giving it to them. On the other side, now the adult children, the older ones, the elderly, are the ones who are also experiencing the same thing. And now we give them, again, laxatives. Now I will tell you this, that when these people are aging, chances of them getting heart disease, chronic kidney failure, and all that are coming in. And now, as these things are coming in, they come with constipation. And if you give out, you give these people uh, some laxatives, some types of laxatives that we'll talk about, you might end up killing them because some laxatives can cause them dehydration, <coughs> therefore exacerbating kidney failure.